service that takes care of all your post-crash running around. Call Amy now. Welcome back. Hope you're enjoying this match on Friday Night Footy. It's pretty close. Tigers lead by nine points, but they're not home. They look as if they're travelling like winners, but the Cats are close enough. It's nine goals, ten to eight goals, seven. So 64 plays 55. And as we've said all night, boy, both these teams need a win desperately. The Cats have lost six straight. Now, the AFL website, just a reminder, can keep up with the action from all matches with live scores, player stats, and the official ladder. Plus, there's also live audio from the seven commentary team for selected matches. That's the uh, AFL website, www.afl.com.au. Well, some of the key players tonight. No one's been bigger than Matthew Richardson. No, he's been great. He's covered ground. He's kicked four goals. He's certainly given them a great target up forward. And uh, if he closes out this match, he'll get the Tigers home. Gary Hocking looks as if uh, he's suffering tonight. Flu or something. He's just not himself. No, he hasn't looked anywhere near the normal Gary Hocking we expect. So you would question whether he's cooked or not. He's coming off again to start the last quarter. Ben Holland's been good, I think, Jason. He has. He's battled well. He's taken seven marks, kicked a goal. Looks dangerous up forward. Jason Mooney struggled. It'll be interesting to see where they play him, if they play him in the last quarter, Mooney. No, he's also he's coming the He's bench, on the bench, so Bruce. He's obviously uh, not feeling too well either. Thanks, uh, Dipper. What, uh, what about Plapp's game? Uh, he's been he's, good. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's been good since he's been on the ground. He's, uh, he's certainly looked dangerous up forward. He's led well. He's kicked a, uh, a good goal, and he's given them a bit of trouble. There he is. So he's, uh, he's competitive. Competed very well. Third game for Niner. And Tim McGrath's had his hands full, hasn't he? Well, he has. Look, uh, in this sort of form, he's hard to shut out um, Matthew Richardson. But Tim McGrath's battled hard. He, uh, he can hold his head high. What do you reckon, Dipper, at three-quarter time? Well, the geisha was absolutely wrapped in these back lines. I said that... Uh the Rogers are doing a terrific job, also Gasper. And his opportunity in the third quarter might have cost uh, uh, Richmond a, a decent lead in, uh, going to this last quarter. I still reckon Richmond got the, uh, uh, the edge in this game. So the Tigers for Dipper. Now, I'm just looking for Ben Graham, where he's actually playing. Full back, mate. Full back. Actually, he's going uh, down the other end of the ground. Oh, he's tripping already. Now. That's where we need him. He's going forward now, Dipper, as we speak. That could make it a very interesting last quarter. So it's all set up. It's 9-10, plays 8-7, 64 to 55. First goal, pretty vital here in a low-scoring match. And it'll be a ball up. Snell on the ground there uh, for Geelong. Robo for Geelong, the bench, uh, Jason Mooney, Hocking, Raleigh and Darren Milburn. Some uh, decent players there. Surprised about oh, Raleigh? Yeah. Had eight posses in the third quarter. Yep. And, and gee, Hocking and Mooney, I know they've both been out of sorts. Obviously uh, struggling. Quick kick by Snell, who uh, is on the ground, as Robbo said. Lindsay was strong there. Bizzle over the top. Oh, terrific gas, but Bizzle's handball was ineffective in the end. Riccardi back towards Arnott. Snell, Riccardi, Tigers in numbers, quickly getting to the fall of the ball, holding it up. Ball up. And the Tigers, Bruce, we've got uh, Broderick, Evans, Harrison and Brendan Gale. Benny Gale's had very little on-field time tonight. Important smother from Gasper there. He was Wasn't terrific. It, yeah. 45 metres out. Lindsay gets the handball. Oh, I reckon Burns threw another one. Steinford gets it from uh, Arnott. And Steinford running out of room. Kicks her behind. Ronnie's been pretty slick with those little gives in a couple of occasions tonight. Well done, Matthew Knights there too, to uh, just uh, squeeze that kick. Let's have a look at this one. Any different to the one in the second quarter? Oh, that's even worse than the other one. <laughs> the last one was a two-handed <laughs> throw. That one was a one-handed <laughs> throw. <laughs> Joel Bowden's kick. Pretty good out wide for McKee. The ball at the feet of the big bloke. Bizzle to uh, confront him. Forces a boundary throw in. Gee, you wonder whether it's your night when uh, Clint Bizzle's hand pass was... Uh, you give credit for Gasper reading it, but, uh, gee, it looked like a goal. All sewn up for the Cats as Clint Bizzle tried to get the hand pass beyond Darren Gasper. Lindsay doing the ruck work, does well, gets his left hand to it. Bowden gets it away to Chaffee. Chaffee's kick, slews off the side of his boot a little bit. Sampson does well, his body work was pretty good. Got himself to uh, the opportunity to get it clear for Dragosevic. Hand pass wider still, Proctor. Gee, he's caught, got to be penalised. Yep. Had Great too chance. many chances there. Yeah, once, half uh, an hour. once he's had all of that time, Robo, as we know, if the tackle is legal, he must kick it or handball it. In that case, the ball just fell out of the tackle, so penalised for incorrect disposal. Good persistence from Jason Snell. Snell already uh, been in the play three times in the early part of this uh, last quarter. 
Chance there for Lowther to Corrigan to Snell. Fourth possession, important. Oh. Gee whiz, Ronnie, can they get any easier than that one? Hand pass wide to Steinfurt. Steinfurt's kick, he is there. Oh, great mark. It's a strong mark from behind Gaspar. Jeez. And Ben Graham, you'd be loving this, Jason. It's just exciting to see him up forward. I think he's been a, a breath of fresh air. He actually led to the pocket, and uh, when the kick came in, it wasn't where he wanted, but he adjusted very quickly. He held Gasper under the ball and then took a great one grab under extreme pressure. Let's hope he can finish. Well, he could make it two points the margin. He's missed. So it is seven points in favour of Richmond. Just a couple of minutes into the last quarter. They just look better with Graham up forward. It just gives him a little bit of direction. He's probably a bit careful with that kick. He's just missed his last couple. Admittedly, they're about two quarters apart. Bowden. Defining moment in the match, I think, in the next couple of minutes. Mark taken by Bizzle. The Cats are making a run. They've got to get a score on the board. Bizzle's high ball to full forward. Rogers and Burns. It was a terrific contest. Kellaway. Campbell, okay. Proctor, not much room to move. Got it to Campbell. It was Andrew Kellaway originally. Campbell's kick is a defensive one towards the line. Bizzle and a boundary thrown. A good result by Wayne Campbell. Wasn't a bad kick up there. Gained about 35 metres with only a yard or two to spare along the boundary line. 9-10 to 8-9. Remembering that Geelong have lost six straight. I don't think a team has lost seven in a row this year. Collingwood have got close, I think. But... Um, Richmond also just desperate for four points to stay alive in the comp. Campbell, Scholl, it bounced inside. Boundary throw in. This would hurt Geelong if Richmond can go forward and get a goal. Because the Cats have dominated the early part of this turn. Minch, Holland. Over the top, Barnes. Minch's handball. Arnott. To Kilpatrick. I think it might be uh, Lowther actually. Sorry, you got that right. ball yeah. into the middle of the ground to Scholl. Scholl just switches play to McGrath. Nearly slipped out of his grasp. And then maybe the fact that the Richmond player did come down and tackle him as he kicked the ball, it was to the advantage of Jason Snell, who was marked on centre wing. He in turn goes into the middle of the ground where Barnes has the football. Barnes goes short. Not a bad selection. Kilpatrick has the football. 55, maybe 60 metres from goal for Geelong. Goes across the half-forward line. It breaks down. Joel Bowden to Nick Daffy. Doesn't he kick the ball good distances when he's got to squeeze it out of a tight situation? Minch's left foot kick is high. Up and under, but a good mark taken by Hall. Looks to play on. Gives away a little bit of meterage. Brad Scholl, 18th possession coming up. Kicks the ball to half forward. Burns has done very little all night. Caught by Knights. Away to Lindsay. Steinfurt. In goes Snell. In goes Snell. And gets the goal. One point the margin. Who could forget Shane Gould winning five medals at the Munich Olympics? You can't forget the awesome foursome's first gold medal win in Barcelona. For me, I'll never forget Madame Butterfly's win in Atlanta. Keep collecting your unique set of 24 official Olympic posters from every games of the modern era for just $1 each with the Herald Sun. Get the coupon in the Herald Sun tomorrow and every day. No one gets you closer than your official Olympic partner, the Saturday Herald Sun. Well, they've got a chance, all right. They haven't been in front for a fair while in this match. Just looked it up, Collingwood did lose seven in a row at the start. But uh, the Cats are closing here, 9-10, 9-9. I agree with Robbo, Snell's had five kicks and kicked a goal. And he's only been on the ground for about uh, seven minutes. Well, the Geesh, he'd be getting tight, wouldn't he? Let's hope his players are not. He couldn't help himself sitting up there. Gee, the Geelong players would be wondering how to win a game, wouldn't they? <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't yeah, it, Robbo? Yeah, they've and been they've, in this posse. And they've had a couple probably under control. The Hawthorne and Securda ones come to mind. Arna gets it from Corrigan. Just kicks it high to set a half forward. Riccardi, Burns, Rogers, chance here. Snell, ridden to the ground. Play on called. Little kick away from Powell to centre wing. Barnes will probably have a moment here to think about it. He does. Loads up. Wobbles to half forward. Difficult ball to mark. Hall front spot. Should have probably left it for Burns. Ridden into the ground by oh, Kellaway. Oh, Penalised for incorrect disposal. That seemed really tough. I mean, it, 
didn't have much time, tackled, and the ball spilled out of the tackle. Andrew Kellaway across the ground to Ottens, and Ottens strolls away in the back pocket. Gee, Geelong have dominated the early part of this last quarter, and if they don't get the score on the board, Richmond might come down the ground. This is Ottens, kicks it out wide. Not a bad kick, not marked there by Platt. Over the oh, top, you're joking. was Milburn, not to... Uh, the liking of Jason Dunstall. Well, look, I, he probably did go over the top, but he slid in, punching the ball away, I thought. Gee, big possessions. Geelong have had 19 kicks to 11, 14 handballs to 5. They've been inside their forward 57 to nil. All in this last quarter. Kick forward by Corrigan. A high ball. Oh, good mark by Rogers from behind. He's he had the run in the leap. Tonight, he did have the run in the leap, Matthew Rogers. But he still had to take the mark. Just a little undecided as to which area to go to on the ground. Kicks it out wide. Underneath it, good mark, Kilpatrick. In front of Richardson. Stood his ground well. Then got the hand pass away to Barnes. Barnes could be the player. Barnes, left foot kick to an in scoring range. Oh, nearly the mark there to Graham. Kicked away by Rogers. It'll be thrown in in the left forward pocket for Geelong. Just One on ground level. The margin, just on ground level, Rob. I can really feel the urgency of Geelong here. They can feel the wind coming up here. They've made their move, haven't they? Yeah, the, the players the are quarter. talking up. The players are using their voices, which was missing the first half. Tigers need to get it down to Richardson and get a goal in the pocket. Well, they claim a, a free kick. Not there. Bizzle back turn. Steinford. Couldn't get a kick away. Steinford has another go. Richmond desperate. Bowden running out of ideas oh. and room. Scores a level. 64 apiece. And certainly no coincidence that they've come right back into this since Ben Graham moved forward. Here's the head-to-head. -head. Have a look at that. Geelong have won 83 and Richmond 82. Over a long period of time, they've had some great clashes. Just over 36,000 people here tonight. A good turnout again. We might get our fourth draw between the two clubs. We could. It's a, it's a real thriller here. Nine, ten apiece. Good mark, Hall. Matthew Knight's coming on for the Tigers and Brodwick going on. Thanks, Dipper. Hall, high. Can Ben Graham get into the frame? Well done, Gasper. has been terrific all night to Campbell, but they're playing it in their back half at the moment, Richmond. McKee's hands were good in the front spot, and he takes the mark at half back. Tigers unable to get it forward. They're stuck. Corrigan couldn't take the mark he just took his hands away McGrath little one over the top well done again by Lowther chance for Corrigan to fall forward Graham oh, super good strong mark she hasn't he changed the complexion of this game he dominated in the first quarter up forward then he had to go down back to do a bit of troubleshooting this is just fighting for front position keeping the eye on the ball that's a strong grab because Darren Gass has been terrific tonight he, uh, he's done a great job down back, and that's no mean feat, that, Mark. This to put the catch in front. It looks good. Oh. He's missed. Well, they're in front for the first time since early in the second term, so it's been a long time away. It looked good off the boot, and I guess the reality is that Ben Graham has missed his last three shots for goal. And the other thing is that Geelong have had a lot of the play. They've gone something like uh, nine or ten times to one inside their forward 50, and they haven't capitalised on it. And Brendan Gale now on, obviously very fresh. He's been most of the night on the bench. Obviously Barnes uh, picking him up. What about the stats, Jason? They've had 42 touches to 22. It's like Twice an extra player. It has, it has been, hasn't it, in the uh, what we've had about seven or eight minutes of play in the last quarter. The kick in. Pretty good distance. Up high was McKee, gathered by Broderick. Beautifully done. He found a little bit of space to get Gasper. In turn, the kick went forward. Ben Holland. The marking contest was at half forward. It was Richardson and McGrath. And Jason, they watched the ball over for a throw in. Jason, at the start of the game, you said that Richardson's got to be around the, uh, the goal square. He's now sort of uh, around the centre half forward. He should go back to the goal square, I think. I think Spot he's on. just jogging back now, Dipper, so he might have listened to you there. The boundary throw in. Brendan Gale gets it down. Clap to Nick Daffy. Gee, it's an important possession here. Richmond have just got to get it. Proctor, he's taken to the ground. Didn't have anywhere near control of the football. What did you think, John? Oh, yeah, look, you're, you're right, Robo, but it's a tough situation, isn't it? Because he, 
He absolutely was sure that he was going to take possession of the footy, so committed to the tackle, but unfortunately... Would you have like to have seen that at play on, Paul? Oh, look, he tackled him without the ball, so it's got to be paid as a free kick. Well, he's coughed it up because Mansfield has chipped in and taken the mark across the half-back line. Michael Mansfield, well, not big stats, took just his third kick, goes out wide in the direction of Snell, knocked away by Proctor, then Bowden, Arnott, Dragosevic, well done. Just love the way, the passion that that young fella has for a game of footy. I just love his name. Fantastic. Dragosevic. Go for it. Dragosevic. Oh, have a look at Ronnie Burns. He should be playing over the road. Olympic Park. Boundary throw in on centre wing. Ronnie Burns has been highlighted a couple of times. Getting rid of the football. No way known that he's had any sort of fist on it. He is dead set playing rugby, Robert. That was the third one that led to the last goal. So, uh, you know, that's a crucial, a crucial decision or a non-decision. There he is. He struggled, Burns, but uh, a couple of those handballs that haven't been handballs have been effective in terms of putting a score on the board for the Cats. Umpire spoke to the runner there. That's the second time, Bruce, too. Arnott, second go, little kick to centre wing. Kellaway, Bizzle got rid of him. Snell, big last quarter, ridden into the ground by Proctor. On the up, Corrigan, outside 50, little chip. Graham's got it again. <laughs> well, look at Barnes, Bruce. Barnes on his running down, he is, but I reckon this has got to have a shot. When he's anywhere within 50, he's nearly, well, if he kicks a goal, he's nearly been the difference, hasn't he? Being further out probably helps him too, because he'll uh, relax and kick it normally. 48 metres out. Missed it again. He's kicked four consecutive behinds. And as soon as he's on an angle, he starts stabbing at the ball. He's trying to steer it through instead of his normal follow-through. He's taken seven marks in the forward 50, Ben Graham. Bruce, I'd be interested uh, if we could ask John when, when he gets a moment in play uh, whether the umpires might have a look at these replays and maybe uh, take a lot of note of uh, Ronnie Burns with his getting rid of the ball illegally. Yeah, look, I, I certainly think they should look at the replay and see what they've done wrong tonight, but I'd, I'd be opposed to them going into next week's games or the games that follow with any preconceived ideas. So the kick down the line, no mark taken. Barnes very cleverly again. Oh, run down by Broderick. That's the sort of desperation that'll win a game of football when it's close like this. Geelong two points in front. And have a look at Paul Broderick. Oh, you beauty. That was a great tackle. He's behind the wing. He'll kick the ball close to half forward. Up in great front. Mark. Great Mark Richardson. That's Matthew Richardson, of course. His kick in towards full forward. The leap from behind was by Holland. Kick forward by Samson! And oh. now Kick by Clay Samson! Hi there. Dinner's in the oven. What's wrong? My new accounts girl was... was killed at work today. It's not your fault, is it, Dad? There'll be an inquest. I think I'll be charged. Gee, so look at the reaction. Samson and Campbell in unison. 10, 10, 9, 12. Seven times the leaders change hands tonight. The Tigers are back in front. That could really hurt the Cats. They'd worked so hard to stagger to a couple of point lead. Arnott drops it. No free kick. Power over the top. Bowden's quick hands. Knight's running onto it. It's been held up for most of the night. Good tackle by Steinford. Ball up. Actually, they've done the job on Hocking, and the Cats have actually done a fair job on Knights too, haven't yes, they? Yes, very much so. Matthew Knights, eight kicks and four hand passes. Effective three tackles. Remember the Tigers, sorry, in their last two matches have lost by six points and two points. We have a four-point game here. Daffy, well played by Mansfield. Quick kick by Arna. Dragosevic will want this to stay in. Runs hard. Might have a bit of time to look up. Bowden's outside 50. Decides to bring it back to full forward. Richardson, McGrath. Richardson's got it. Well, I talked about Ben Graham at the other end. This bloke has been a star. Yeah, and look, uh, all of the Geelong players, including Scholes, suggesting that Tim McGrath was actually dragged away from that marking contest by Matthew Richardson. And I must admit, it certainly did look like that from here. His prime objective must be to mark the ball. Here's the angle from the other end. He's kicked four goals, four tonight. 
5-4. He's the match winner at the moment. He'll be a hero tonight if they can win the game. Prices you can't go past on Triton two-wheel drive cab chassis 17,990 with power steering and free tray. Great deals on Triton four-wheel drive and express van and seven-seater Nimbus from 36,990. The Mitsubishi end of financial year sale now on. It is Mitsubishi. Well, if you're Matthew Richardson's agent, I don't think you'd be too disappointed uh, about his performance tonight. He's probably put another zero on any sort of contract that he might be negotiating. Powell. Right foot kick by Robert Powell, oh, and he's got it again. Now, you know, that's the one. <laughs> the first action to push him out of the way, the second action to go for the mark. It has to be a free kick on every occasion, and I'd suggest that maybe somebody should tell Matthew Richardson that during the week because uh, he seems to be disputing the obvious. Contest there, Callaway provides the shepherd to allow Campbell to kick the ball forward. Yes, clean mark on this occasion. And that's the best possible answer. Get in front, give, isn't it? Just giving away a free kick. Forget about it. Attack the ball. This is a good, strong mark. He had to prop and wait. He fought to hold his position. McGrath tried to spoil, but he was just too tall and too strong in front. And I think this would be uh, well, this would bring the, the roof down if he managed to convert from here. He'll be kicking from just outside 50. Jason, he's kicked five goals for Jeff Geeshan watching on. At the other end of the ground, ben, Ga ben Graham has kicked three goals, four. Have a look at this. And it is a goal to Matthew Richardson, oh, is it? No, it's missed. Post. Five Just goals, five. The post. Took the paint off the inside edge, Robber. Oh, this coaching cape is a tough night out. <laughs> We'd rather be having dinner at one of the flash restaurants down in South Yarra, I'm sure. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> Kick it. Go on, Bruce Sully. You're right, Robbo. Mansfield's got a terrific effort by Richardson tonight. 5-5. He's kicked Milburn around the corner. Cat still with a big chance. Kilpatrick attacks. Goes hard. Ben Graham, he's tied it. Didn't get there. Poor kick. Gasper was good, but the kick was bad. Had no penetration. Gasper wide. Not a great kick either. Hall defensively. Ben Holland getting back with Ben Graham. Ben Graham's been wonderful. Well, he can load up a goal here. This will be oh, close. Oh, get in. It's just away. In fact, it might have been marked by Campbell on the line. It has been. Quickly plays on to Rogers. Rogers, well, he wants the boundary line, and he's got it. Well, Ben Graham's kick off the boot from here Ooh. looked good, didn't it? It did wheel right behind it. Looked like it was going through, and... Uh, Ben Holland has had to go down to fullback to pick him up because of uh, the sort of presence he's having up forward. Just set up nicely. He's played well, hasn't he? I mean, he, he hasn't, unfortunately, spoiled it in the end by not kicking those goals. Not that one, but the others. But uh, he still had a huge match, and maybe he will still play a part in the result of this game. Certainly Richardson at the other end has had an enormous influence on what will happen here tonight. 11-11 to 9-12. So the Tigers who are used to these close matches... And that close one with Brisbane in round eight here, and then those uh, consecutively close matches against Adelaide, Hawthorne and Port. Five minutes to go. They lead by 11 points. Well, the goals have uh, been pretty hard to come by. And Richmond lock it up once again. Joel Bowden and Simon Arnott. The play is just forward of centre wing, favouring the Cats. They've got to kick two unanswered goals if they're to pinch this game in less than five minutes. Ottens gets his hand to it. Gathered by Lowther. Kick forward by Corrigan. Left foot kick slewed off the side of his boot. Rogers plays the percentages and knocks it away for a boundary throw in. He, it's, you just can't sing his praises highly enough, Matthew Rogers, tonight. The job he's done on Ronnie Burns has been outstanding, and that's one of the reasons why the Tigers are in front. Just 11 possessions to Burns. On the other hand, Rogers has had uh, 16, and he's kicked a goal. So, Richmond with an 11-point advantage. Time ticking away. Snell a chance. Squeezes the kick over his left shoulder. Campbell does well. He's been a good leader, Wayne Campbell. He's an experienced campaigner now. He hasn't had a great deal of the footy. By his standards, he's had 21 possessions. But by G, he's worked very hard and talked very productively around all around the ground. Boundary throw in again. 
Left forward pocket for Geelong. Minch leaves it behind. Gasper. Duncan Callaway. Still Callaway. And in the finish. Yeah, very well disguised. Very well disguised, <laughs> Jason. Exactly right. I mean, Duncan Callaway certainly wanted to get that ball over the boundary line, but didn't want it to look too obvious, so uh, disguised it well. And almost threw it in the process, too. Yeah. There's a bit of uh, each way there. Right forward pocket. Cat's got to get a goal out of all of this. Broderick, well done. Bowden. Richmond playing the percentages. Callaway. Rogers kicks to centre wing. Hall and Andrew Callaway. Good mark. So Duncan to Andrew. Little one. And the mark by uh, Dragosevic. You'd reckon they'd hang on. Dragosevic's kick. Wants Daffy. It was in play. Daffy can be very dangerous. Pops it up. Richardson or Platt. Richardson almost. Ball still to be won. Over the top. Pow, pow, pow. They're home now. Sunday. All that stands between a city. This isn't a train exercise, is it? And its annihilation is a man who's never seen combat. I'm just a biochemist. I drive a Volvo. Beige one. And another who's been out of action for 30 years. Welcome to the Rock. Sean Connery. You sure you're ready for this? Nicholas Cage. In the action premiere. Seems Alcatraz was just real. The Rock. Sunday, 8.30 on 7. It's amazing, isn't it? They're pumped up when they kick goals like that. The players of today and Robert Powell, Campbell kicks it forward again. Richmond a chance. Riccardi running away from Matthew Richardson. Kicks it out very wide. Andrew Callaway will allow it to bounce over. And a throw-in will take place on centre wing. Three minutes left. Gary Ayres looking down the barrel at his seventh straight loss after winning the first five absolutely amazing they were traveling beautifully geelong when they'd won five of the first five rounds in afl 99 but they've lost six in a row it's amazing stuff joel bowden's kick richardson jumping leaping he's taken the mark so you know three geelong players just stood and watched that happen that was terrible someone had to put their body in front of the contest and be prepared to take the bump too many of them watching, expecting Tim McGrath to be able to do it all on his own. Well, he's a hard man to contain, isn't he? I think uh, we've uh, often spoken about the athleticism and just the sheer brilliance of Matthew Richardson. Short kick into the middle, Broderick. Probably quite prepared. Is it a little too early, maybe? Two and three-quarter minutes left to do this sort of uh, time-wasting? Well, they're basically three goals up, so I think uh, any time you waste now is basically going to make it just that tougher for... I mean, you're not going to basically get a miracle finish, are you? Three Fair goals enough. in a minute or so. Proctor, a high kick. Gasper at the back, Matthew Knights. Drag down, Samson. Oh. Second goal for the quarter. Yes! Gee, it was a snappy handball from Matthew Knights. Nice. He got tackled when he was trying to kick the goal. And whilst it's been pretty quiet in uh, in terms of a normal Matthew Knights performance, the recovery was fantastic. He roved at the back, tackled as he tried to kick it. Look at the quick handball. Looks a bit like a Ronnie Burns handball too, just oh. quietly. <laughs> well, there's been plenty of it tonight. Yeah. Oh, there was a touch of the Ronnie about it, wasn't there? <laughs> the two Ronnies. Well, he's done well. Legitimate handball or not, the thinking was terrific. 13-11 to 9-12. The Tigers have finished it off. They've kicked the last four goals. And it's going to be a bleak night for Geelong. They've really hit a hole, aren't they? Off the ground by Broderick. Here's a chance, too. Powell will be licking his lips. Onto it with pace at 50. Then goes high towards full forward. What Richardson... Coming over the back, chance here for Sampson. He's kicked a couple of miracle goals. Shoal with him, boundary throw in. I think one of the good things about tonight is that Matthew Knights and Wayne Campbell have effectively been hurled up in an offensive way, but have contributed in a very disciplined manner. And often when they've been beaten in the past, they haven't had much to, to say about the result of the game, but they've both done well. Ottens out of the air, kicks another one. Icing on a very, very sweet cake. Tell you what, he's a player of the future, that bloke. 
He is, he is. He's a player of today, but I mean, he's got a big future in front of him, hasn't he? He just works Johnny Barnes out of the contest, took it cleanly, one hand, threw it on the boot. Good awareness of where the uh, where the goal is, and that's just a terrific finish. It's disappointing for Geelong because they probably deserve to go down in a real tight one, but as it turns out, they're now five goals down, and it probably, look, there hasn't been that much between the two teams on the night. I think that's what uh, really good, tall young fellas can do on the forward line. Take control of a boundary throw in like that. And Brad Otten's kicked the goal, the 14th for Richmond. Milburn knocks it forward. Andrew Callaway going nowhere. Jason Snell wide for Burns. Not able to uh, lick onto the football, but Broderick was. I think he's been very good, uh, Paul Broderick. 14 possessions. Powell to Chaffee. Chaffee across his left shoulder right shoulder rather in towards full forward Sampson trying to find some space back to Shoal Nick Daffy across his left shoulder Matthew spectacular stuff again by Matthew Richardson carry like this has been a carry like performance it has he'll be king of Tiger Land tonight and when his confidence is up he just starts flying from all different sorts of positions gets his hands to it and drags it in I mean, that's, that's the sign of a player who knows his game is on tonight. Well. Deserves this, deserves to kick six tonight. And the administration at Richmond have better sharpen their pencils and get a signature pretty quickly because you couldn't afford to let him go. He's done it. He's kicked his sixth goal. In a match-winning performance, Matthew Richardson. Six goals, five. 13 marks. 17th kick was his sixth goal. Well, this is just uh, alarm bells for Geelong now. I mean, when you look at the scores at the end of the game, it's going to be a very comfortable win to, to Richmond, but with three minutes to go, there was only a couple of kicks in it. Big stats, aren't they? And that doesn't include a dummy spit as well. I mean, he's had a huge <laughs> night, hasn't he? Well, Geelong were in front uh, yep. at about the halfway mark of this last quarter. I think they hit the front with a rush behind. Six goals, five. You could have eight or nine, Matthew Richards. Yep. So, the Tigers, well, they keep their season alive, you'd reckon. I know they're going to be on the same wins as the Cats, five each, but the Cats are not going to recover, you'd think, from this tonight. And we, we did mention at the start of the night that Matthew Richardson needed to stay a little bit closer to home. He's had 17 kicks, 11 scoring shots. That's very pleasing from a Tigers point of view. Big win for Richmond. Perhaps they're still in with a chance in terms of the finals. Only once since 82 have they made them. Huge victory. 15-11 to 9-12. A six goal to one last quarter. And you think these two clubs have been playing each other for over 90 years? The score after tonight, 83 all. It's all square, but not on the scoreboard. It was a terrific night for Jeff Geeshan. An even better night for Matthew Richardson. And a wonderful evening for the Cow Tiger fans. For the Cats, well, I reckon for Gary Ayres, it's going to be a long weekend. A very long weekend. Dipper, it was a huge night for Matthew Richardson. Fantastic, Bruce. As Bruce said, it was a huge night for you. 11 scoring shots and uh, 17 uh, kicks around the ground. Magnificent game by yourself tonight. Yeah, it was just a good all-round team effort. Dipper, we needed a win really badly tonight. And uh, when it was there to be won in the last quarter, everyone dug deep and uh, come out with a good win. The important part for yourself, for the conference, you got those early goals and those banana kicks you've been practising. Yeah, mate, it was just good to get a couple early, I suppose. It always helps your uh, confidence later in the game. It was a very tight game, uh, Richard. I mean, the last four or five minutes just run away with the game. Yeah, I mean, it was close up until the 25-minute mark, and we got a bit of a run on in the end, so it was good, I suppose, to kick a few in the last quarter. Were you, uh, were you unhappy about uh, getting taken off the ground with a bit of dummy spit there? Oh, no, mate, I knew I was going to be coming <laughs> off, that's for sure. Were you expecting Big Brain to pick you up throughout the week? What's that? Were you expecting Big Brain to pick you up? No, uh, no, I've always played on Timmy McGrath in the past, so, yeah, we were thinking I'd find him. Well played, mate. The boys are looking for you. Well Thanks. done. Congratulations. Good on you, Jibber. Bruce, there were some interesting stats. I, I think we pointed out, Jason, that uh, early in that last quarter, Geelong dominated, but they didn't get the result on the scoreboard. They went into their forward 50, 10-1 in the early part of that last quarter. It finished up 
12 to Richmond inside their forward 50, 14 to Geelong. It's always the way when you've got the play, you've got to, you've got to capitalise on it. Geelong didn't do that, and inevitably you get punished when the ball does go to the other end. They convert, all of a sudden they get their confidence back up, and the stats tend to even out over the course of the quarter. So the catch go away. I saw Gary Hocking in a moment ago, a forlorn figure. Yeah. Not the night he wanted. A big build up with all the promotion surrounding uh, name change, etc. But nothing happened for him tonight. This is a good win. This, uh, who knows? I mean, they, they're frustrated in the past. We don't have to tell their fans that, do we? They're an enigmatic club. They're an enigmatic team. But maybe, maybe, maybe they can get some momentum here. They get a bit of percentage out of tonight. They have an important win. They finished in style. A superstar has stood tall for them tonight. Perhaps they can make a drive for the final eight. And you talk about a six, to, six goal to one last quarter. It was six one to one five. A good sign for Richmond is that under pressure they converted, whereas the Geelong players weren't able to do that. And this is the sort of win on a night like this that gets the, gets the season going again. When you think maybe it's stalled, you're off and running again. Yep, you feel as if it could be a turning point. There's a lot of work to be done yet, but it could be a turning point for them. You want the hairs on the back of your neck to stand up? You listen to this go, Bruce. <laughs> like the Tigers. All along. They'll be in good voice. I'll tell you what, it's fantastic, say, isn't it? From a Carlton. I love, the, I love the club theme songs. Good win. We're going to stay in there for a bit. There's the geisha. I reckon that Dipper might make a beeline for him. I'm not sure if he'll talk to us or not, but uh, the players look like they might be going inside. This game was uh, there to be won. The Cats have made the running in the last quarter, put their noses in front. Always wondered. Uh, I think uh, Dipper showed out geisha. Do you want to come over? As he strips to get ready oh, for the camera. Look he's at unbelievable, <laughs> Dipper. Good on you, Dip. <laughs> he's running the show. Get him a microphone. Well done, Jeff Geisha. He's copped a lot of flat gift, Jeff Geeshan, this year. Patrick Smith's pencil's been pretty sharp on uh, on uh, Geesh during the year, but uh, here he is with the dipper. Well, uh, Geesh was a magnificent win by your boys then. Yeah, I mean, uh, probably halfway through the last quarter, Geelong had a bit of momentum there, so it caused a little bit of concern, I suppose. They're starting to run well, and Graham was always a headache up forward when he was there, and it looked as though at that stage you are in a bit of trouble, but the kids really dunked deep. I thought tonight was really significant. Uh, kids like Dragosevic and, uh, oh, good, good. yeah, Ottens, uh, you know, some of our lesser lights, McKee, the kids that were have been sort of bringing along and bringing along, giving them game time and experience, all of a sudden all blossomed together tonight. So we're wrapped about that because Nida and uh, Cambo and, and some of the others were down a little bit and uh, these kids stepped up for us, so we're wrapped about that. And yeah, what did you say the young witch over quarter time then? Obviously a bit of a dummy speed out that 50 metre. Oh, look, you know, we've been uh, working very hard with Richo for some time now about his body language and about his discipline up forward and stuff like that. And, look, there wasn't much in it. Sure. He got a, it was a push out there and he got penalised and then he got the 50 metres. And I just wanted to remind him he's been magnificent in that area most of the year and we just didn't want him going back to old ways. And uh, he came back on and he certainly did what we asked him to do. I think he's kicked six goals and 13 marks. The club uh, certainly has uh, caught a bit of flack over the season, uh, but this uh, a win like this uh, obviously gives the club a lot of confidence. Oh, it does. I mean, we're very young. I think it's been uh, overlooked, the fact that there's been a bit of a changing of the guard with people like Charles and uh, Michael Gale and Trent Nichols and sure. Bauer and some of these players moving on and the Dragosevics and Ottens and McKees and that having to take up a bigger role. And it takes a little bit of time for those guys to find their feet. And they're starting to do that now. I mean, we're halfway through the season. I just hope out of it they get that self-belief and confidence that we've been looking for. And if they do that, we're going to be competitive right throughout the rest of the year. And one of your great players of the club, uh, Brendan Gale, on the bench most of the night. Is that uh, sort of change of guard coming up as well? Oh, possibly, but uh, Brendan's carried the ruck work at this club for several seasons now, and young Ottens is a is a raw young colt that's just ready to explode, I believe, and you know, we've been trying to give him more and more game time and tonight we went with the fact that we'd start with him and he repaid us with, you know, an outstanding game, and oh, Brendan Gale's still got an enormous yeah. lot to offer, but when Ottens was going so well, it was very difficult to uh, change it up too much. In two players, Gaspar and Rogers in your back line, just magnificent tonight. Both had a job to do and both did it really well. I mean, Mooney has been a very good player for Geelong all year in the forward line, probably the most effective forward line. Gasper did a great job there and Ronnie Burns is always extremely dangerous and Rogers was very disciplined in his role.
And um, sorry, what was that, Bruce? Sorry, Jack Kellaway. I thought Kellaway's role on Hocking was outstanding, Dipper. Kellaway's uh, role on uh, Hocking was just magnificent tonight. Yeah, it well. was terrific. I mean, Whiskers, uh, <laughs> it, it was a big game for the Geelong yeah, Footy Club sure. and for Gary Hocking tonight. And there was a lot of sort of attention placed on that. And we just felt, you know, we know what Buddha can do. He can really lift to the occasion in this sort of situation. And we felt that uh, Duncan Kellaway was the right man for the job. Any supporters out here Friday night? Your first Friday night win this year? Yeah, well, that, that's a surprising stat. I hadn't realised that, but I. I know that we have let them down a little bit, especially on the Friday night. So it was good. There wasn't a huge crowd in, but the ones that were there, I hope that they They're go home. out there, I can tell you. I hope they go home happy. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Thanks, well Dipper. Done. Thank you. Good on you, Dipper. Good interview there with Jeff Geeshan, who's... Uh well, he's got his feet firmly on the ground, but they're in with a bit of a chance. There's Daffy in the background and Gasper. They were good and Rogers. They had most of the good players when you look around, didn't they? They did. I think uh, when you look at the Geelong side, there was probably only one clear winner in Ben Graham, and the rest of them just battled all night. But uh, the Tigers, they had several winners, and uh, they made full use of that. And you can just hear them. Just uh, another rendition of the song in the background. They're pretty pleased with tonight's effort. Good on them. It sets up the weekend for them, and... Uh, well, as I said for Gary Ayres, it's a long weekend now for Geelong. Seven consecutive losses. It was an entertaining game, it really was. But in the end, Matthew Richardson really made a huge difference. He was the outstanding player in a very good team. And the Tigers finished full of running. And they won 15 goals, 11, 101 over Geelong. Nine goals, 12, 66. McDonald's McMatching.